Recently, Nintendo released the SNES Classic, and people went ballistic. And what I want to know is why. Not why did they release the SNES Classic, the answer to that is money. The answer's always money when it comes to business. But rather, why do people care? So this is the SNES Classic Mini, or as we call it in the UK, the SNES. As you can see, it comes with 20 plus 1 games, also known as 21 games. I mean, that's quite an impressive number, so what have we actually got here? Super Mario World? That's pretty standard. Link to the Past? Super Metroid? Zero? Oh, my favourite SNES game, Zero! After all these years, how could I possibly forget about Dash Zero? I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt and assume they meant F-Zero and not Zero Mission, because Zero Mission was a Game Boy Advance game, but hey, the Game Boy Advance was essentially a SNES, right? So what are they selling all of this for? $96? It's pretty good for what's a pretty much an emulator. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel $96 is a bit expensive for an emulator. I mean, I've got one right here. It's completely free. It's called D-Gen or uh, Gen. So let's play something. Let's play some Sonic the Hedgehog. Ugh, I don't remember the startup sound sounding quite that bad. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think Sonic's looking too good. To the emulator's credit, gameplay-wise, it does seem to be playing pretty well. It's just it looks and sounds diabolical. But no complaining because it's free, right? Right. Luckily, we don't have to stand for this level of quality. We've had decent emulators since the 90s, with some notable examples being Gens, Genesis, and my favourite, Nesticle. <laughs> Basically, what I'm trying to say is that you don't need to spend $100 to play these games. But that's stealing, says the average YouTube viewer, using adblock to skip the ads on this video. Only the lowest scum of society steal. Well, maybe you was right. But it's not really stealing, it's copying. Nothing physical is being taken, so it's okay. Game Dev Tycoon is a good game for the most part. Except there's this weird thing where people keep pirating my games and I can't make any money, and there's nothing I can do about it. It's bad game design, how am I meant to deal with this? Maybe making copies of a game isn't as carefree as one would initially think. As demonstrated here with Game Dev Tycoon, it's almost impossible to make a profit due to pirates pirating your game. So what we can gather from this is that pirating games is never okay buy the SNES Classic. Except, I kind of wanted to play black and white again, but you literally can't buy it anywhere online. But that's okay, because physical copies are still available. Got myself my physical copy of black and white right here. It comes on an old medium called a compact disc. Let me just put it in my computer. Maybe physical copies aren't the be-all end-all solution I was looking for for companies going bankrupt. After all, it's not even like the disc works on Windows 10 anyway. Loads of old games had something called safe disk to prevent piracy. Because of this, I had to download Download a no CD crack to make it work. Kind of ironic that in the long run it made piracy almost mandatory to be able to play the games at all, but whatever, that's anti piracy for you. Developers will do all kinds of stupid anti piracy measures that all seem to end up backfiring anyway. Take Spore for instance, you could only install it three times most pirated game ever made. Great job, bravo, you did an incredible job there EA, congratulations. You know what, screw EA, 429 for Dungeon Keeper 2, great deal. Except I can't bear the thought of giving money to electronic arts. But anyway, we were talking about abandonware. It's a bit of a dubious topic and no one really knows what counts as abandonware. Officially, it's software that's not supported or sold by the company anymore, but here I am playing some Commander Key and it's completely free. I look on the website, they're still selling it. This can't be legal, right? But 3D Realms don't seem to care. They're selling it on Steam as well, the Commander Keen Complete Pack. Except it's not the Complete Pack, you're missing two games. You get more games for not paying than you do for actually paying legally, I don't understand. I thought you're trying to discourage piracy, not promote it. This is a copy of Adobe Photoshop. It's not a legal copy of Adobe Photoshop because a legal copy of Adobe Photoshop costs a buttload of money that I don't have. 
Well, don't use it then, you might say. Well, if I didn't use this Premiere Pro and Audition, I wouldn't be able to make this video to the quality that it is. Some of you might think that's a good thing. And if you think that, then why are you here? Go watch a video you like. Otherwise, subscribe and press the like button. I need it. I was actually going to buy Premiere Pro, but the free trial of the latest version was a complete buggy mess, and so I pirated a version that actually worked. Good job Adobe, billion dollar producer of industry standard products and they're still full of bugs. Great work. But that's enough of my adventures in piracy. The real question is, is the SNES Classic actually worth it with how easy it is to play these games these days? I mean, I can just open up Google and play Super Mario World right there in my browser. Sure, the controls suck, but it still works. But then again, even if I wasn't a pirate, I'd still be kind of skeptical. I mean, the Genesis flashback is a fraction of the price and also has 64 more games on it. The review score isn't looking too great though. I wonder why? 80 games? Oh no. Oh no! For those of you unaware, At Games made the Genesis Fire Core. And let's just say it wasn't the best iteration of the console. I mean, the games played okay. It's just the sound. Oh well, still a step up from DGen. The Genesis Flashback also has a cartridge slot, unlike the SNES Classic. I mean, what games are you actually going to play on this Super Mario World? I could buy an actual SNES in Super Mario World for like $20. You see, I've got my old Mega Drive Genesis right here, it still works. Let me just plug it into my TV. Now, where does it go? What does this do? What sort of stuff? What does, what does RF mean? It's too difficult for me. I need HDMI cable. It's compatible with my television. Maybe the past isn't so intuitive. If you want to buy a SNES Classic, it's not like I'm going to do anything about it. But then again, I'd just buy a 2DS for the same price and then buy all these games on the eShop. Then it also doubles as being a 2DS and it can play modern games as well. There's that, and it's also portable, so you can take it anywhere. But that's just me. It's just a stupid video about emulation and piracy. Don't take it seriously, kids. This meme will never die because we are in the beam. We are in the beam. We are in the beam.